Uh, welcome, Dr. Venki Munakrishnan. Um, of course, you are co-director and robotic surgeon at Apollo Hospitals in Chennai, one of the highest volume robotic surgeons in the world. And of course, uh, a, a real privilege to be your friend and colleague. I thought that we would have a little discussion around the, the benefits of minimally invasive surgery, in particular robotics, and the collaboration that we have had over the years, uh, and how you see collaboratives like that going forward. Thanks for uh, the chat. Uh, looking forward to uh, you know, uh, you know, having this discussion and sharing our views because we've done lots and lots of uh, you know work together, and it uh, came from a chance meeting. You want to talk about it? No, I, I think it, it's been hugely exciting, um, the journey that we've been on. And it, we were one of the very first um, uh, collaboratives, really, that began to span um, at least three continents, um, potentially four if you, if you say that the UK and Europe are not the same. But, but um, a chance meeting that we had, and then a collaboration that included um, Professor Stephen Wexner, Professor Antonio Lacey and the two of us that, that, that led to some real, real, real great things for education. But also, I think we've been able to share our experiences towards patient care. Uh, and, and all of us, I'm sure, have learned from each other to optimize our practice. Um, is, is that what you found as well, uh, Peggy? Absolutely, Manish, because when we met uh, in uh, 2016, September, if I remember right, uh, you know, by that time, that December, you were doing your first meeting. I know the whole world has gone gaga with online meetings and, uh, uh, you know, Zoom calls and uh, uh, webinars. You were front runner. You, 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 you did this in 2017. You got a group of specialists together in a room and we webcast it to about 30,000 people in 2017. Fast forward 2020, People are just replicating what you did three years ago. So, what? No, and, 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 and I mean, I think that, that that worked very well, as you said, for educational purposes. But I think one of the, the important things that we saw with all of this is how we can then, where appropriate, um, use our expertise to discuss patient cases um, across big geographical boundaries. Absolutely. Because at that point, uh, I, we had just started our. Uh, our, our, our colorectal institute are a few years old. We're just starting robotics. And the next thing which we needed was to put in processes and patient care protocols. And one of the important things which we needed to do was multidisciplinary team meetings, which the UK and the US had, you know, had lots of experience, particularly starting off in the UK and the US followed that. And we now in India and, you know, the wider Asian region, really need to take the MDT forward. And so that's when after we you finished your meeting and then we had our first meeting in Chennai, that's when we said, okay, let's start this patient collaborative protocol driven approach, learn from what you guys have already achieved in the UK and the US with Prof. Exner and yourself. And we set up the MDT and today, three, four years down the line, we have completed 130 meetings or something like that. And patients have been discussed at a collaborative, MDT approach has been taken, but particularly for rectal cancer, can I, that's become the standard. And so I'm, our patients are extremely grateful. And so much so a few weeks ago, uh, Dr. Pratap Reddy, our chairman, came online for our, for our online virtual MDT. And he, was, and he was so appreciative of the initiative taken from where this all stemmed out from our meeting. And you know, it's, it's gone on to influence patient lives. Oh, I think that I think that's uh, that's huge um, testimony. I think to also your organisation and and the setup that you have um, in Apollo Hospitals, of course, is one of the most prestigious healthcare institutions in India. But but if we move on to to actual practice and practice changes, I think we've seen, particularly in the last few years, a real drive towards minimally invasive surgery, and many of the patients both you and I treat are patients that are having operations for colorectal cancer. I still see many patients that have come to me um, and have been offered open surgery. And, and, and yes, of course, there is a place for open surgery in a selected group of patients which are technically challenging or there's a problem with the tumor that necessitates that kind of approach. 
But my feeling is, is that too many patients are still being offered open surgery as opposed to a minimally invasive approach. And, and I'm not sure that's the right thing, particularly for clinical outcomes and also for, for the patient's perspective, particularly. I agree, because uh, I think looking at how surgery has evolved, you know, 20 years ago when I first came to the UK, that's when lap open surgery was, you know, was standardized. Uh, TME came in for, if you know, you're taking rectal cancer, for, for instance, you've done a lot of work in that area and, uh, and they're an expert in that. Uh, with you know your work with Gina Brown is you know is uh, stuff of legend because you really got into it. Why it is so important is that, for example, rectal cancer care is standardized. You know, you know you you do an MDT, you make the right decisions, and then the TME approach popularized by Bill Heal is is stand whether however you do it, open lap robotic, it still has to give the same results. So how many of your trials you're going to do? It's not going to change the final outcome. But what will change or what will be the difference between open lap or robotic will be the short-term outcomes where patients have quicker recovery, less blood loss, uh, less length of stay, quick, you know, quickly going back to their normal lives, better nerve preservation because you're seeing things better. And you know, I understand when people are told that you know, some surgeons feel that they have to feel and, uh, you know, and see where the tumor is, but in operable for, and we're talking about rectal cancer here, in operable rectal cancer surgery, I think most of that data or the operability or all that has already been assessed in your MDT. All the data is available in your MRI, CT, everything is there. So I don't think you will, 99% of the time, if you've done it properly, you're going to see any surprises as long as you're going to do a good TME, you're going to achieve the same result, whether it's open, lap, or robotic. But the most important thing for the patient is that the cancer cure, which we've achieved because the technique is standardized, but the short-term results, which are, as we discussed, are much better with minimal invasive surgery. And also functional results like nerve preservation, sexual function, and, and uh, you know, continence, there is evidence to show that it's better with minimal invasive surgery. So I think we have to push for that, or at least give the options to the patient. Yeah, no, absolutely, and 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 I think one of the things here that that, that is that, that we should really get across is that unless there is a specific reason to do so, um, patients should really be offered yes. a minimally invasive approach. Uh, my feeling is is that when patients are not offered such approaches, it really comes down to two things. One of those is lack of resources potentially but I also think a lack of training and expertise. And if that's the case, then I think that that, that, that that should be made clear that this is the reason. It shouldn't be sold on the premise that, oh, actually it's a better operation. Because actually I think we've now got enough evidence to suggest that minimally invasive surgery is a better option for, for patients that are having colorectal cancer operations. And, and, I, and I hope that, that that is the message that patients are being told when they go and see their surgeons. Um, because ultimately, it is our duty to be offering our patients the, the most optimal treatment plans, and not necessarily the ones that uh, the ones that suit ourselves, because actually, it may be the case that you need to refer a patient on to somebody else, if that particular patient warrants a different type of surgery. Absolutely. Okay, so so if I f um, move on to, to, to the final part of, of um, this short podcast that I wanted to, to discuss with you, your, your vast expertise in, in robotic surgery, and this is of course something that we're doing now at the London Clinic. We're very excited to have um, this new XI machine in the Institute of Robotic Surgery at the London Clinic. Um, but, but share your thoughts as one of the highest volume robotic surgeons in the world about how you think this can benefit patients and, and why we should be offering our patients that type of approach where appropriate. Yeah, great question. And I think robotics, uh, you know, I was very skeptical when I uh, started out because I was saying, you know, one, there's multiple, I thought it takes more time to set up and, you know, maybe more cost. Uh, and, you know, there's several issues to address, but you know, as I, as I keep telling everyone, the person who convinced me is Dr. Reddy. I think he saw it because he has been in patient care for 
so long and you know has set up private healthcare, uh, particularly in, in, in India, as we know it. And he foresaw that robotics as te technology really changes everything for the surgeon and for the patient. And when we started our program out, yes, it took a bit longer because it was new technology, we got to get used to it. But once the program was rolling, what we saw was the operative time came down, the, the setup time came down, the short-term results were great, and also, once you become a high volume, high volume surgeon and a high volume center, the cost is comparable to laparoscopy. And in some cases will be cheaper to it because you have become so independent of external factors because your robot will support you to do all that. And then this becomes even more important, particularly in the context of this pandemic, because we are looking at more and more less sort of contactless or re reducing the number of people in the theater environment. So the robot will help you to replace or at least remove the extra people who are there to come and assist you or you know, do some suction. Everything can be done with the help of the robot. So what our experience has been that as your experience goes up, the time comes down, the cost comes down, and the short-term results are showing because patients are getting better. Our, our length of stay technically is about four, four and a half days, which is brilliant. Our patients come from out of town, so we have a different patient model. So they stay for six days. You know, they're ready for discharge for four and a half days for rectal cancer surgery, but technically they leave on six because they're from out of town. But you will see that these short-term benefits all add up. One for the hospital, two for the patient, three as a surgeon. You would you could do two procedures, three procedures at a time because you would not feel tired because you have this great tool at your disposal, which really, really changes the game compared to what we're doing laparoscopy when you're standing and with straight sticks, you know, I don't think it's, it's a game changer. And it's gonna, with the advances like uh, ICG, which is inbuilt like Firefly, which makes the operation more safer. And then technologies which are gonna be built in like feedback and, you know, uh, is really gonna change the world of surgery for us. You're absolutely right when you say that um, the benefits to the patient are, are, are tantamount here. and and. And that may be more so perhaps for, for the precision that you're able to obtain with these difficult, challenging operations. Um, yes, they can be done laparoscopically. Yes, of course, they can be done open. But I think the, the key here is, is to limit and minimize the surgical stress to the patient. And doing it in this, in this fashion with these advanced instruments, I think, is, is a huge benefit for patient recovery. And particularly rectal cancer, because you have such stable platform, you can do this dissection, get into this, you know, very low tumors where, because patients don't want to lose their sphincters. And I think getting below, very low on the pelvic floor, doing a reconstructive surgery is so much more straightforward, easier with the robot compared to laparoscopic surgery. The conversion rates to an OPER operation in, with the robot is 4%, laparoscopy 16%. So there are several short-term benefits, which particularly in rectal cancer surgery, I think in a few years time, robotics will be the standard. And I, 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 I'm already seeing it. Our data is uh, now about 250, 260 cases. So we're gonna hopefully publish it very soon, which will be a template for lots of surgeons who wanna pick it up, but we've seen the results. And you know, I'm, I'm sure it will reflect when you know, it's adopted widely. Well, with that, I'd like to thank you very much um, for spending the time with us today, um, Dr. Munakrishnan. I think um, benefit from your experience. Um, of course, I've spent some time operating with you in Chennai. Um, it's a fantastic city, fantastic place to work, fantastic institution. Uh, and it sounds like um, we'll be looking forward to the, uh, the publication of your very impressive clinical outcomes in due course. So thank you very much, Dr. Munakrishnan. Thanks, Manish. See you soon. See you soon.